we will discuss friend functions today so as i told you uh, that friend function is an isolated normal function but uh, the advantage of having a friend function is by becoming a friend of one or more than one classes this function can access the private data of the classes right and it can manipulate the same so uh, you know when you want to give the access of private data of certain classes to the outside world okay it is possible with the help of this friend functions fine so a function uh, how becomes a friend of one or more than one classes is uh, by declaring its uh, prototype okay its prototype is seeded with the friend keyword under the public mode of class to which it wants to become a friend okay right so it is an isolated function by giving the prototype preceded with friend keyword it can become a friend of one or more than one class right so condition is the classes to which it is becoming a friend of all such classes object references must have to be passed as argument to that particular function okay Like for example, if I have class A, B, C and class X, Y, Z, and I have a function called swap, okay, and this swap function wants to become a friend of this class and this class, then condition is the classes to which it wants to become a friend, of which object references must have to be passed as argument. You can see here, our A, B, C object reference and X, Y, Z object reference both are passed as argument, right? So now. the friendship it can perform with these classes by giving its prototype prototype is nothing but the uh, you know function definition right including return type function name arguments fine so this is prototype prototype preceded with friend keyword friend is a keyword here so here also you have given right so by giving this prototype preceded with friend keyword what happens this fu function is becoming a friend of abc and this swap function is becoming a friend of X, even x y z right now this is you can see when you are writing normal functions how you write you write like that right? it is not being binded to any of the class okay it's a normal isolated function now since it has become a friend of this both classes of which private data it can access through the object references right so a dot a see a is the private data small a here in abc is a private data And X is the private data of X Y Z, so it can access uh, you know the private data of both of these classes to which it has become friend. So by accessing their private data, what it is doing, it is swapping, right? It is swapping, right? Um, S A is being interchanged with X A. It means here the private data of A and X have been interchanged, right? So there is a uh, there is a function called print in both the classes. In order to see the reflection after this swap function is called, uh, we can probably execute and see that, right? So in constructors of these classes, we are initializing some value like ten and twenty, and after the swap function is being performed, you can see the interchange is going to be done. Fine. So in the main function, the execution of the same has been mentioned here. I am creating objects of A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. Like a one and x one respectively. Then, before the swap function is called, we are printing uh, the a one and x one private data. After the swap function is called, when we are printing uh, the private data of a one and x one, we can see the interchange is going to be happening. Like the same, we can probably here uh, see with the demonstration. So the same example here, I have written. you can see i hope this is uh, visible to all of you the same example class x y z class a b c see before i define the class a b c 
I have declared the class X Y Z. This is called forward declaration. Why we are giving this forward declaration here? This is said to be forward declaration, right? This is also one of the concept. Probably it will be asked in viva and all kind of thing, right? What is forward declaration? Before defining the classes, you are declaring it, right? Class X Y Z is defined here. Before it is being defined, you are declaring. Why the necessity of the this declaration is required here? Because in class A B C function, we have one function called swap, right? So this is an isolated function which is becoming, which is trying to make friendship with both A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. So in such situation, both the class object reference have to be passed as argument. But when compiler looks at uh, the class, uh, seeing from the uh, A, B, C talk, it can then see that the swap function is having two argument. A, B, C it can identify, but X, Y, Z it does not know because it is declared after, after this definition, right? After this declaration. So, in order to notify the compiler that this, there is a X Y Z class declared, uh, you know, after this declaration, we are giving the declaration of the same before A B C class is, uh, you know, defined. So this is said to be forward declaration, just to notify the compiler. Fine. So, in uh, in this particular example, forward declaration is required, right? Why? Because in A B C we have swap function which is taking A B C argument which has already been notified by the compiler. But X Y Z also you have mentioned. But what X Y Z is is not defined before this function, uh, you know, declaration. So in order to notify that there is a class of X Y Z available after this declaration, you are declaring it before A B C, which is said to be the forward declaration. Got it? So now <clears throat> uh, the same example here I have written in this particular you know uh, demonstration. You can see. I have an ABC class of which private data is available, of which uh, value is uh, initialized with any uh, uh, constructor. And there is a print function with the help of which I am displaying ABC value. And then there is a swap function, okay, uh, which is going to the which is going to become a friend of both here, uh, for which uh, we are passing object reference of both here as arguments, right? So now we have. Uh, Now we have, you can see, X Y Z class is declared in which there is a private data X available, and then you can see uh, the X value is initialized with twenty in its uh, constructor, and there is a print function to display the same, and swap function. See the function which is becoming friend of both of these classes. Uh, the prototype preceded with this, uh, you know, function prototype has to be mentioned under the public mode of both the classes. Under public mode of both the classes, and now you are defining swap function here. So you can see here what exactly swap function is doing. Uh, object reference of A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. Uh, it has taken the argument and uh, it is accessing the private data through these object references A and X. And interchanging the same utils, right? So we can probably here see after uh, we define the function in the main function. What is that we are doing here is we are creating ABC object A, right? So when object A is created of ABC kind, whose private data A, there is only one data member that is A. Of which memory been allocated, and the default constructor is also with the same, so which is going to be invoked here during the object uh, creation. So uh, a value will be initialized as ten, right? And then x, y, z object we are creating x. So what happens? So for x, what all the uh, memory required for its general numbers? Memory been allocated here. You have x actually. You have x. So for small x, the memory been allocated. And uh, whose value is going to be initialized with 20 with the help of default constructor, which is associated with that particular X Y Z class, right? 
Now before swapping, what happens before swapping? A, uh, what happens a dot print when you say it is going to print uh, the a value uh, of uh, an ABC class object, element a, which is going to be of course ten here, and x value is going to be printed as twenty, right? But when swap function is called by passing this a and x, uh, this object reference, uh, you know, you have a o b and x o b. A o b is going to refer a, and x o b is going to refer x. And then it accesses their private data and interchange the same after it has been completely executed. So when after swapping again, when you print again, when you print the value of a and x, you can see a value becomes twenty and x value becomes ten, right? So with the help of the friend function, right? What is that we can able to do? We can able to access the private data of classes, one or more than one classes, right? And we can manipulate the same. This is what the advantage of having the friend functions. Now let us execute and probably see this. The output I have already mentioned. The same you can probably see after you execute. You can see the output here. Before swapping, a b c dot a equal to ten, x y z dot x equal to twenty. After swapping, what is happening? a b c dot a equal to twenty, and x y z dot x equal to ten. Yes or no? So I hope this is clear to all of you. Yeah. Then we'll move on to friend classes concept, right? A class can become a friend of another class, and thereby uh, it can access the private data. Of, you know, same. Fine. See, this was uh, possible only through inheritance before. Now, with the help of this uh, friend, uh, we are able to achieve it uh, the same, right? We'll see with an example here. This uh, example actually I have given as an assignment in your uh, question bank. I have solved it here anyway. Okay. In this example, see there is a square class. Fine. I hope this is all visible to you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, in this example, square is a class in which uh, uh, there is a member called side, okay, uh, which is the private data of it. Uh, uh, to find the uh, you know area of the square, you will be using a formula called S into S, okay. Now there is another called uh, class called cube, right? We have cube class. So this uh, cube class uh, basically uh, what happens? Uh, if you have the uh, same dimension of a square, taking uh, all you know 
six uh, spaces together putting it uh, you know uh, attaching each other will get a cube rather yes or no so this is how you know you if you have a square i'll take another one right i'll just do this how many surfaces i'll get 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 surfaces will get yes or no so if let us say for example uh, the square area is uh, a square what is the formula if you have side then probably if you say side is represented with s the square area is going to be s square yes or no but then if i have to find the total surface area of q what is the formula since you have six surfaces uh, is going to be 6 into s square it's going to be 6 s square yes or no of q so what i wanted to do is uh, there is a square class uh, using the same square i have uh, built a cube here right so um, now for this cube i want to calculate the total surface area so to calculate the total surface area of cube um, i can use the side of the uh, square with which i have built the cube right so uh by accessing the private data of square which is nothing but the side of it helps me in calculating the uh, surface area of the cube right that is what uh, the example uh, that i am going to here demonstrate so in order to access uh, this side which is the private data of square in cube is possible only when cube can become a friend of the square class so here i have taken a cube class right this is said to be the forward declaration because inside square class i am here making the cube function cube class to be a friend of it right there is a cube class here i have defined after the square so if cube class wants to become a friend of this square class it has to give its uh, you know declaration that is class cube preceded with friend keyword under the public mode of the particular class to which it wants to become a friend of it right Like how we do it for the functions, right? Now, once the cube uh, class become a friend of the square class, uh, it can then access the private data of the square class inside its own, right? So it can mean uh, the cube class can access the private data of square class once it becomes a friend of that particular square class, right? So that is what I am here trying to demonstrate. Okay. so uh, since uh, i have mentioned uh, inside the square class the declaration of the class q which is not defined i have to declare it before i uh, you know uh, define this square class which is said to be forward declaration right uh, notifying the compiler that this uh, there is a q class which is defined after this declaration so that it will uh, allow you to have this kind of statement right otherwise it returns an error right so in basically working with when uh, friend classes and functions you need this forward declaration right i hope this is clear to all of you and now uh, we'll try to uh, demonstrate and then uh, understand the same okay so <clears throat> before i execute it i want to explain you the program here see we have a square class whose uh, private data is s okay and whose value is uh, assigned with 10 inside its uh, constructor right and in cube class here i want to find uh, in alignment with surface area volume as well right volume formula is s cube na yes so here i have taken a print function this print function when being invoked it will uh, calculate volume and uh, surface area then it is going to display both right so this print function which wants to access the uh, private data of the square class of whose object reference is required to be passed so you can see square object reference is passed here in print and with the help of this object reference we can access this private data that is smallest right s dot capital s dot smallest capital s is the object of object reference of square class right So s dot s into s dot s into s dot s I said right. So here we are finding out what the volume, and then uh, what is the formula for surface area? Six s square six into s dot s into s dot s right. Then we are printing. So now
in the main function i am creating a square object okay sob fine when you create an object of sob what happens for sob there is one uh, private data associated with it uh, as for which the memory been allocated and uh, whose value is going to be initialized with 10 here you can see right because the constructor associated with it uh, square going to be invoked immediately after once the object is created so this is initialized with 10 here then cube c you are creating an object of cube class here fine uh, cube class object you are creating then uh, its uh, data members are v and sa so these two are going to be created for which uh, two bytes each memory been allocated since they are integer kind and then its uh, there is no constructor here of course right so no initialization then you have the print function to be called by passing sob as argument right so when you are calling this print function this object reference s is going to act as an alias name to whom sob is we are passing as an argument so when i say s dot s this is nothing but sob dot s nothing but 10 10 into 10 into 10 so it's going to be 1000 so volume of the cube is going to be calculated and then surface area is going to be calculated with this particular formula here 6 into s into s means sob dot s that is nothing but 10 10 into 10 this is going to be 6 into 10 into 10 is going to be 600 right the so surface area been calculated and the same is going to be printed here right so this is what the output you can see volume equal to 1000 and surface area equal to 600 but my main idea uh, behind it, explaining this example is how a class can access the private data of another class by becoming a friend of it right see this was possible only earlier with the help of inheritance right when a derived class was inheriting a base class base class properties the uh, derived class could have uh, been able to access it in a very similar fashion the a class can access the private data of any other class by becoming a friend of it the condition for becoming a friend of any class is to give its uh, declaration preserve with friend keyword under the public mode of the particular class right right and once it is done then it can access uh, its private data with the help of object references and then it can manipulate it okay so this is all possible so the other way i can say friend function is a uh, friend class is uh, an alternative of inheritance but exactly not like inheritance in inheritance we have a lot of other facilities right but uh, with uh, uh, with certain limits under the you know uh, specifications given by the scope rules are right anyway let us uh, execute this and see the same kind of output you are going to get or not yes you can see here volume equal to 1000 and surface area equal to 600 you have got right but then actually smallest from where we are accessing we are accessing it from the square class got it this question i have already given in the assignment but i have demonstrated here okay i hope this is clear to all of you right now shall we move on to the next topic we'll move on to the static class concept right i hope all of you know what is static variable right what is static variable any one of you from your class because you have already studied this in the c when do you say variable is a static basically in c when you have learned you may have uh, learned these st uh, storage classes there are four kind of storage classes we have right auto static extend register right so for static variables where the memory allocated for static variables and what is the default value of it and uh, what is the life of it what is the small time sir yes yes right so here there is a difference uh, um when you are talking about lifetime of static variable with other variables yes or no so what do you mean by lifetime actually 
what do you mean by lifetime if i simply declare a variable called int a okay by default what is the storage class it will take it will take auto storage class yes or no so for a memory been allocated inside the ram yes or no so as we know that in c c plus integer requires two bytes it basically depends on the type of processor you have there will be processor 64 bit processor and all kind of thing but uh, keeping in view of let us say it is a 16 bit it is a small kind i said it is two bytes it can vary of course right just stick with us <coughs> minimal uh, i am not uh, going in detail of you know number of bytes rather i am interested in explaining you the memory allocation how Uh, memory uh, and where the memory and how long that memory is going to process the particular variable. This is what exactly I wanted to discuss in this particular session for lifetime. Okay, so let us look at this. For example, I have a variable called a. When it declared, when it is declared, uh, as we know that it is going to be, uh, you know, created. I mean, uh, for which the memory is going to be allocated, right? Uh, inside RAM, and uh, as we know that. Uh, every memory will have certain address unique address right each byte will have a unique address uh, i i when i talk about the address it's always the first byte address right uh, if you have let us say two bytes uh, we are talking about the base address is always the first byte address subsequent uh, byte is going to be obviously the increment of the same because uh, when the memory been allocated uh, for a two bytes if required then Uh, the entire two bytes is going to be uh, allocated at a stretch, right? At a stretch in the sense, in contiguous locations, it will be available. So it means uh, if I say the first byte address is 200, obviously the second byte address is going to be 201. I'm not interested in the uh, subsequent byte. The only first byte is going to play an important role because that acts as the base address for the particular variable, rather, right? So here, <clears throat> uh, let us say, for example, a when I have said. For a memory being allocated, uh, this is your memory. Let us say a RAM you have. Right? So here, let us say it is allocated. You are in execution. I mean, this program is in execution. Let us say, fine. But uh, as we know, multiple programs can be allowed to be executed at the same time. Yes or no? We have multitasking operating system. Uh, you can see Windows. Unix is also you know time sharing and multitasking, right? So when multiple programs are in execution, you may not be always executing the program which you have initiated, right? You may be executing that program for a while. In between, you may be going for uh, um, taking certain inputs for the same, fine, and uh, waiting for some event to occur. R You may be, you know, uh, switching on to another program. Yes or no? Switching on to another program, or while uh, writing and executing the program, you may be doing something else like uh, watching certain video, right? <clears throat> or looking at your mail kind of thing. Other applications also you must be doing. Yes or no? So when you are doing these things, then what happens? Those programs, those tasks. Are active, I can say yes or no. So when those things are active, this is deactivated for a while. Yes or no? Though it is in uh, execution, available on your uh, available on your RAM, but it is uh, deactivated for a while. When it is deactivated for a while, what happens? Uh, if say for example the other program require uh, you know more memory, then the memory which was uh, been uh, allotted for this particular program before. that will also be taken away for that particular program right for the particular program so uh, for a earlier when it was in execution before the memory which has been allocated was pointed uh, with this address it means this is the slot which has been given when it was executed before but now deactivated for a while and then some other program is in execution yes or no so this memory is given to the program which is now in execution now after this program is executed again you come came back to this particular program when you came back to this program again the memory is required for this a so next time when uh, memory be allocated for a could not be from the same place right it can be from some other place then the address is going to be different yes or no address is going to be different so 
now i can say the lifetime for a the lifetime for a before when it was executed this was the lifetime it means the memory which was associated with that particular variable for how long is said to be the lifetime of the particular variable in that particular instance yes or no so it means that uh, the lifetime of a is changed right the other way i can say the a when you are executing it for the first time i mean before right the lifetime for a was for certain amount of time until the program the program which was in execution was deactivated and then switched on to some other program and then when again you get back to the same you can see the memory been allocated for the same at some, at some other place now the lifetime is different right for this particular a so how long this lifetime or uh, this memory is going to be associated with this particular variable is nothing but the amount of time that this particular program under the execution and the system has allotted this particular memory for this variable for how long is what exactly the lifetime in the next time right so it means the lifetime of the variable is going to be changed okay it is not going to be same but whereas if it is a static one okay but whereas if it is a static one what happens if say for a memory been allocated with certain address 100 okay for static okay now this particular memory is going to be retained even after deactivated for a while and uh, you have switched on to some other program then you get back to this program again for execution you can find you know the same memory it means the lifetime of this particular variable will be constant okay it is not going to be changed this is what the difference of static variable that is the reason why uh, in uh, hit counters right A youtube hit counter you may have seen right or you may have seen uh, website hit count right how many people have visited this website or how many uh, people have viewed this particular video you will find there is a value that particular value is maintained with the help of a static variable fine because the lifetime of the memory for the particular variable should be constant enough okay so that only the updations can take place on the same and can give you always the recent value otherwise what happens every time it may start with zero and uh, it may give only one value rather right so it may not be carried value from where it was basically available before that right so that is the main idea of a uh, static concept to implement in real time actually so i hope uh, the difference of uh, static variable is clear to all of you if any function is having static variable i said that function is said to be a static function if any class is having a static function a static variable then i can say that class is a static class i hope it is clear we will see with an example we will demonstrate it with the help of an example now let us look at this example here my static is a class here i have taken a very simple class my static class my static is a class here and it is having a variable called count this is a static variable see if a variable has to be declared as a static you need to declare it before you you need to declare it with static keyword it means uh, the declaration of the particular variable is uh, preceded with a static keyword okay so then this particular variable become static and the lifetime of this particular variable will be constant over the entire execution got it now in my static there is a constructor we have my static in which i am incrementing right so my uh, motive behind uh, 
you know uh, taking this particular uh, count variable uh, and incrementing it uh, every time when an object is created is that every new user when invoke this has to be counted as a next one right rather as a first one so that uh, we can probably find how many users have visited my youtube channel or my website okay that is the main idea here. so uh, here we have initialized it with zero first and then in the main function i have created how many objects i have created three objects of my static class m1 m2 m3 so what happens here basically i'll explain you and then we'll see the execution so when you declare a count variable here you have created m1 object you have created m2 object you have created m3 object right so basically whenever you create an object uh, memory required for it is going to be allocated how much memory is really required for any object is based on the data numbers that it has uh, associated with here there is only one data number that is count right so here there is a count variable for which memory has to be allocated right but this is a static count variable so <clears throat> first count if it is a static memory once been allocated right that's good now what happens is in this particular scenario this particular memory is going to be shared by all this particular object there is no separate memory is going to be created for all these three objects okay there is no separate memory going to be allocated for three objects. if you could have taken this count as a uh, without static it means uh, by default it is auto right so if i take is a if i take it as an auto storage class variable then memory for this count is going to be allocated under each object but now since it is a static kind what happens memory is going to be created once and being shared by all these three objects now what happens when m1 created um constructor is going to be invoked whenever you create an object so there is a default constructor you have which is going to be invoked when it is invoked what it is doing it is incrementing count value but initially what was the count value for zero initially before creating the object you can see and then when i have created m1 uh, uh because of this uh, default constructor also being uh, you know invoked here um, along with the uh, object creation uh, it is incrementing count then count value becomes one here then again you are creating another object called m2 for m2 m2 again when you create again what happens its uh, constructor is going to be invoked then its constructor is going to increment count value the same count value is incremented you can see it is incremented to two because there is no separate memory if it could have been separate memory here here and here then uh, before uh, you go for uh, object creation it must have been zero all the time and whenever we, you create an object its constructor when being invoked it could have been one 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 here yes or no but uh, this is not the case with static right if it is a static what is happening there is only one memory for count to be allocated and the same is going to be shared by all these three objects so what is happening every time when uh, m1 m2 m3 uh, being created their uh, respective you know uh, constructors have been invoked the count value when been incremented it is reflected on the same memory what it so when m3 is uh, created what happens its constructor when being invoked it is again incrementing count the same count has been incremented from where it was it will forward it to the next it was two before and now when incremented it gets three yes sir so now total objects are when i print here i can see the count value will be three instead of one 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 right if i could have taken without static what happens and i print this uh, m1 <coughs> you know count m2 count m3 count it could have been one 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 but this is a static kind so you can see the count memory once been allocated the same is being shared by all these objects that is the reason why there is another thing which we draw from this is when there is only one memory which is going to be constant enough for the entire execution you know been allocated for irrespective of any number of objects that you create and the same is going to be shared by all these objects when they are going to invoke the respective functions to manipulate the same why not we can access it with the help of class itself right instead of object that's how exactly you can see with the help of class only we are accessing this particular you know variable count 
without having used any of these objects right this is another uh, thing which i have drawn from out of it right you need not to access uh, the static variable with the help of any object rather you can access it with the help of its class itself because irrespective of the number of objects <coughs> there is only one memory being allocated for the static variable so it can be directly referred through the class name itself yes or no you can see my static scope resolution operator count if i have to access any variable private data of any class with the help of its class if i have to access how do i access with the help of scope resolution operator right my static scope resolution operator then it says a variable which is required to be called or access rather, right i hope this is clear to all of you now